What signs are there that laser communication is moving up the political agenda? Well, I think there's multiple signs that we have seen over the over 2020 that uh, laser uh, laser communication is of strategic importance and therefore getting higher up on the political agenda. Um, recently, for example, we've been informed by the German government that they would um, like us to refrain um, from doing any business and any transfer of products or technology out to China, um, citing their concerns and uh, uh, and uh, highlighting the importance of this technology and what it really enables uh, for nations to, who have access to this technology. Because of that, we have um, actually stopped our uh, Chinese, inv uh, Chinese market involvement and um, really started concentrated on the Western world and allies uh, because we saw why they are really uh, concentrating on these markets. Um, I think this is really one, uh, one example. And then the other example is how much there has been in 2020 talk about procuring laser communication terminals for strategic needs. Um, and we have seen this year the award of uh, a few um, uh, government contracts, which we call the mostly the, uh, the uh, beachhead contracts, which are the first contracts to come from the uh, government side, mostly the US government side. And um, recently, actually, Mineric had a big win right there, right at the um, uh, right after we had to, we, we um, uh, retreat from the uh, Chinese market. We saw exactly a win in the U.S. Uh, strategic market, the U.S. Um, U.S. government market, and I think these are all connected to both the U.S. but also the rest of the world recognizing the importance and relevance of LaserCom. Thank you. And please tell us about Mineric's expansion in the North American market. Mineric is, um, as we are winning these contracts, and I think this last government contract that we won is a good example of that, and there are a lot more in the pipeline. Um, Mineric across the board needs to expand. I think this isn't just uh, focused on North America. We are also expanding in Europe as well. We are in increasing our engineering and production capabilities in Europe, as well as business development. But of course, in the North American segment, we are doing even more steps uh, as we are building up our capabilities here um, as, a, as a German company. Uh, we have recently hired a uh, president um, into the minor U.S. Uh, offices who is also seeing the complete uh, North American operations. She, uh, um, uh, she um, Tina Gatore, who came from Yasat and previous engagements at Panasonic, um, as well as Boeing, has been hired on to our company and has already ramped up both our hiring and our expansion, such as a new uh, lab space. Um, this is really to support uh, the American market, which, is, which seems to be exactly waking up right now. And there's a tremendous amount of um, requests for proposals and other inquiries coming our way, especially after the announcement of the government contract. And she's building up an organization that can both answer these inquiries, but also then once within these contracts, which we, will, which we are believing that there will be multitude of, uh, that uh, she's building an organization that can deliver those. So we are building quite a bit around that. Um, and uh, the facilities that we have here, we are upgrading the facilities to match the uh, expectation of our customer. As you can imagine, the North American market requires some amount of customizations and some amount of support from an organization that is domestic. So we're building those capabilities. Please tell us about the new U.S. Space Development Agency program. So the U.S. Space Defense Agency, um, the SDA, um, has, been, uh, has been around now for a while. And they, one of their main motto was to work quickly and work efficiently and become a pioneer in making sure that in the space segment that uh, the U.S. DOD is competitive, gets to, uh, gets to build up on the amount of space innovation that is happening in the commercial market and gets to, gets to uh, materialize that for their own purposes. Um, they are very much commercial off the shelf and existing technology oriented. Um, 
As such, they have recently um, recently awarded two companies, uh, Lockheed Martin Corporation and York Space Systems, uh, to build 20 satellites, um, one, 10 satellites each, so uh, altogether 20 satellites for them, that will be um, that will be showcasing the capabilities that can be deployed into space. One of them very prominently is laser communication. I think these satellites are just the tip of the iceberg across the board when you look at the US DOD, but also the intelligence community, there is a tremendous amount of interest into what laser communication can do and what small satellites and big constellations can do for them. And we already see plans for hundreds, if not thousands of satellites to be launched exactly with that in mind. And we are excited to be part of that part of that uh, mission to get low earth orbit for the uh, for the uh, for the DoD programs thank you and what is Menaric doing to ensure interoperability of equipment between suppliers and why interoperability hasn't been um, has been has been a topic for quite some time but hasn't been demonstrated yet between the uh, between the laser communication terminals of multiple suppliers um, Minerg is taking an approach that such an interoperability is key to the success of laser communication in general and to the success of every company involved in it. There are a few companies around the world that are, uh, that are pursuing the same technology or at least the same mission. So uh, what we are doing is reaching out to multiple laser, com uh, laser um, uh, inter-satellite link uh, terminal manufacturers and making sure that we are that we are facilitating a conversation between all the key players. Beyond that, Minerk is developing capabilities that allow the testing of uh, the terminals from multiple vendors in one location. For that, in that respect, we are building up a uh, lab capability that allows um, the installation of two terminals from two separate vendors in a uh, in a high fidelity simulation environment and then allows it allows them to be communicating to each other to check uh, the um, to check the interoperability but beyond just the hands on work we are also facilitating the networking the exchange of information as well as the formational work groups to make sure that um, our customers when they buy laser communication terminals today from one vendor can actually ensure that they are interoperable and communicate uh, and their systems can communicate with constellations from other render, with constellations laser communications from other vendors, or with um, uh, with uh, other parameters. That's important. I think this is going to be one of the main enablers for laser communication in itself to take off. And what is the status of Minaric satellite-borne terminal at the moment? Minaric satellite-borne terminal, which we call the Condor terminal, is currently undergoing qualification testing. It is in the last and the last uh, stint of being uh, uh, being completely internally verified. Um, this is the Mark I of the product, which is uh, the for, the, which was the first uh, fully blown uh, product to be uh, the technology demonstrator. We are already working on the Mark II program, which adds additional capabilities like ranging, timing, and uh, other measurement capabilities and some customer provided feedback is being incorporated. And that is, uh, that is to hit the market actually um, in, uh, towards the H1, uh, end of H1 uh, next year. So we are actually quite, uh, quite excited about this product. Uh, the Mark I terminal is already being, uh, being marked uh, and getting into the hands of customers by the end of this year, early next year, to do engineering testing with integration tests with and whatnot. And what about the status of Minaric's airborne terminal? The Min Minaric's airborne terminal, which, which we call the Hawk Air Terminal, is even further down, uh, down the, uh, down the uh, uh, production chain. There are actually, as we speak, uh, terminals sitting in boxes ready to be shipped and uh, shipped to customers right now. Um, they are being used to do demonstrations in the airborne world. Um, we believe there is a tremendous uh, market at the back end of these demonstrations. So we are quite excited uh, for Hawk Air Mark I to hit, uh, hit, our, custom, uh, hit our customers' loading, uh, loading docks. And, uh, and um, 
And uh, there are definitely some uh, flight tests that we are looking forward to imminently that will show the capabilities of these products, which will then open up new business opportunities, additional business opportunities uh, in the next year. And what are Minaric's priorities for the next six to 12 months? The big uh, priorities for Minaric for the next six to 12 months are um, to capitalize on the big wins we had this year. I think when you look at it, um, the SDA and many others, um, a few others have um, uh, issued um, contracts uh, this year that we have been uh, very uh, successfully a part of. There is a tremendous success there in business development, showing Mineric's capabilities, showing the uh, scalability, the cost efficiency of our products and the techno technological maturity. Um, with these first contracts, I think we have gained a tremendous, uh, tremendous market visibility. You can see that in the amount of inquiries we are getting after the, after the announcement of the government contract. And there will be, I, I believe there will be more to announce here shortly. Um, we want to build up on, on that and we want to build up our capabilities based on that. Um, what we want to do, uh, to do is um, build up capabilities here in the US by hiring uh, the, the team that is necessary to do the business development, uh, contract, uh, contract management, delivery management, uh, customer support get the facilities in place to do uh to actually do this business development out of but also be able to do um uh, customer facing custom uh, uh customization of our products as needed as well as customer support uh so we need to hire a certain amount of support engineering and uh, um and additional engineering here in north america while also building up capabilities to ramp up production rates, uh, duplicate cells, and bring up production facilities in Europe that are needed to be able to serve the next level of contracts that are coming our way. I think that we can, we can successfully already deliver what we have won today, but today, but uh, today, what we need to do is build up the capabilities that can deliver the contracts that are about to hit next year. And in order to win those contracts, you have to make the investment today to, uh, to, have, the, uh, to have the facilities and the people in place um, that can do more, uh, more throughput and um, more servicing. So that's what's going to be a main priority for the next six to 12 years. I think there is, of course, um, a, lot of, a lot to be built, both, both sides of the Atlantic. But um, the main message will be we are going to grow over the next six to 12 months and we are going to also mature our production process even further, um, decreasing our thermal costs even further, internal costs and uh, stabilizing the production chain.